Hi, everyone. Welcome to Julie's Kids and Toys. And today we are at the Houston Museum of Natural Science in the Paleontology Hall. Come along with us as we learn all kinds of fun things about dinosaurs. Wow, just look at this place. This is amazing. I'm here in the Paleontology Hall at the Houston Museum of Natural Science, and I have Lisa with me. Hi, Lisa. Hi there. Now, Lisa, what do you do with the museum? I am a tour guide here at the Museum of Natural Science. I also work as a concierge, so it's just my job to interact with people and have fun all day long. Now, let's see what you guys have going on here. Are you all digging for fossils? This is so cool. Now, this is a really neat product that you can get in the Museum of Natural Science gift shop. I never knew you had such cool things for kids here. We have so many amazing things here. And what's really amazing is that they're all based on science. I love that it's so educational. What, now, what we have here is by Crystal. It is the Dig, Discover, Display. So you can actually purchase this at the museum, take it home, and have your very own fossil dig. Now, Elisa, I see we have some friends with us here, a little bit smaller than the life-size ones behind us. And this one right here we have is the Triceratops. Triceratops, you know, I'm not very good at deciding which dinosaur is which breed per se. I'm good at T-Rex, that's all I've got. Mm -hmm. So do we have anybody behind us over here too? Oh yes, uh, the dinosaur we have with the really big head and the tiny little arms is gonna be our T-Rex and the ones with the spikes all along the back is gonna be our Stegosaurus. Okay, I think I'm loving the Stegosaurus. How fun is this? Now you also told me we have a really interesting story mm -hmm that was written by somebody associated with the museum. Can you tell me about this? Oh yes, this book right here was written by Robert Dr. Bacher. He is our curator of the Hall of Paleontology at the Museum of Natural Science, and he is a world-renowned paleontologist. He has just changed paleontology all around. It's such an honor to have him as our curator. He has written this beautiful children's book, and actually each and every one of these panels in the museum was written personally by him. And this book goes throughout the entire hall and its history and gives you some of the main characters which in, within each time period. I love the illustrations here. Let's flip through a couple pages and show everybody at home. Look at this. So this is a really neat way to take a piece of the museum home with you. Something educational, beautiful. What a great family keepsake as well. I love it. And now we also have some puzzles that they have here too. I love this dinosaur puzzles. I know I've got kids at home. They're huge dinosaur fans. So that's really exciting for me. Now let's switch gears and talk about these guys behind us. Wonderful. Uh, the one that we have directly behind us, his name is Leonardo. He is a Brachiolophosaurus. That's just a fancy name for he's a kind of duckbill dinosaur. What's really amazing about him is that he's a dinosaur and he was killed. And what happens with most dinosaurs is that they are eaten. With him, not his entire body was eaten and his body de didn't decompose. In fact, the rest of his body was completely fossilized. And we actually have little bits and pieces of fossilized skin and fossilized stomach with Leonardo. He is a replica, but he is one of a kind. We have never really seen this with too many dinosaurs. Oh my gosh, that's so exciting. Now, this guy here, is this a T-Rex? Oh. He is a cousin of a T-Rex. His uh, name is I was close. <laughs> really close. His name is Gorgosaurus. He is going to be in the same family as the T-Rexes. He's a little bit smaller, but he still has the same two fingers going on, and he had a very, very rough life. And But the life of a dinosaur is never really easy. What happened to him is he has multiple broken ribs, but what killed him, in fact, is that he didn't brush his teeth. He has a tooth infection. Are you kidding me? I'm not kidding you. He had a tooth infection, and what happens is dinosaurs are opportunistic. They're going to eat whatever in front of them. So with that tooth infection, he's going around eating more dead dinosaurs, and that has all the bacteria, and that's eventually what killed him. Oh, my gosh. So for him, it wasn't the Ice Age. It was a tooth infection, of all things. Wow. Okay, now what do we have over here? This one looks a lot younger or smaller. Oh, yes. That one is going to be a juvenile, the little baby. These are the same. They are still all duckbill dinosaurs. This is just a different member in the family. These are... What are your names? Uh, 
Edmontosaurus. Edmontosaurus, they were found in Canada. And the really interesting thing about duckbill dinosaurs is that they traveled in herds. So what we typically find are a whole bunch of duckbill dinosaurs together. And we take the best of the bones we have and build the best dinosaurs. And they're really amazing. So we have the adult and we have the juvenile right next to them. And these are actually some of the most complete dinosaurs we do have here. This is absolutely amazing. So is there a way to find out if that's a boy or a girl dinosaur? I know the kids will want to know. We really can't tell just based on bones the gender of a dinosaur. We would need the actual fleshy bits of it. But sometimes we can say, well, sometimes females are a little bit larger. But most of the time it's going to be our external characteristics that give off gender. We really can't say that, but they're both pretty looking. So maybe it could be a girl. So it could be a mommy and daughter. <laughs> of course, I love that. Well, let's see how our future paleontologists are doing over here. All right, looks like our future paleontologists are doing a pretty good job over here. They really are. What they're doing is going to take quite a bit of time, and that's what we see in paleontology. They're working with very small tools because that's what we'd work with in the field. We're not going to take a hammer or a bulldozer to it because we're not exactly sure what there is so far. So it may take a while, but it's definitely going to be worth it. Well, that is just so exciting. Now, have you had an opportunity to actually participate in some digs? I have had an opportunity. I actually went with the museum to go find shark's teeth that were going to be used in classes that we have here at the museum. We were working with limestone, which is a very, very hard rock. So I did have to take a hammer and a chisel there and digging through pounds and pounds of rocks. I maybe only found a few teeth there, but it was so rewarding to actually find little pieces of history. But there are many public fossil sites in Texas that you can actually just go on your own and dig for fossils. I've been there as well. Really? So if a mom or dad wanted to take their children to a site where they could actually dig for real life fossils, how would they go about getting that information? I would actually just go online. The site that I know of, which is the most popular, is going to be Whiskey Bridge. It's pretty close to College Station, Bryan, Texas. The fossils are from the east scene. So once the dinosaurs die off uh, at that site, you're going to find a whole bunch of shark's teeth, a whole bunch of seashells, and maybe a few fish vertebrae here and there. But the fact is those fossils are going to be 55 million years old, and it's a public site, and you can just go on your own, pack a picnic, have fun over there. This is so exciting. Thank you for that tidbit. That is so great. So moms and dads, check out that great fossil site as well. All right. Well, let's go see some other parts of the museum. Now, Lisa, you have a real treat for our kiddos here today. What do we have back here? From these guys right above us, the Edmontosauruses. And it's really amazing. So you can see the little imprints where scales would be on their skin. And this is once in a lifetime chance because typically in other places you don't even get to touch replicas because they are very special but this is a chance for everybody to touch a dinosaur and you can tell your friends at schools that you touched a dinosaur how cool is this guys what do you guys think it's pretty cool so what do you think about touching that real live dinosaur skin replica um i like it you like it what about you it's pretty cool Pretty cool. What about you? How's it feel? I think it's awesome because like, I'm touching like a real life dinosaur. So, yeah. Does it feel a little bumpy, guys? Yes. Yes, yes ma'am. Awesome. All right. Well, this is so cool. Okay, I am so excited to be over here by one of my favorite dinosaurs in the paleontology hall. This is the T-Rex. Okay, now Lisa, tell me one fact about this T-Rex that nobody knows. Well, I don't think anybody knows about this T-Rex right here. His name is Stan. Is that he actually survived a broken neck. Oh my gosh, how did he survive that? He was just really lucky. What happened to him is that another T-Rex did try to tear his head off and it broke his neck. And the reason we know another T-Rex attacked him is on the back of his skull right there, we can see about an inch mark that matches with another T-Rex tooth. Wow, that is crazy. Well, Stan, we're glad you survived. Everybody say bye to Stan. Bye. bye. Now, we are so fortunate to have you with us, Lisa, our very own tour guide. Now, kiddos, does anybody have a question they want to ask Miss Lisa? Uh, when was this found? When was this dinosaur found? This Triceratops is one of the most recently found dinosaurs we have in our hall, and I love the story behind it. There's this grandmother in Wyoming that owns so much land, and she keeps finding dinosaurs on it. And this one's named Lane, which happens to be named after one of her grandchildren here. Wow, that is so cool. Now, I hope she has a lot of grandchildren if she's finding so many dinosaurs. <laughs> okay, does anybody else have a question they want to ask? Why do they have beaks? Why does this dinosaur have a beak? 
That is a great question. The reason why the Triceratops has a beak is dependent on its food. This dinosaur is a herbivore, which means that it eats plants. You can look at its little teeth, and that means that it's grinding down a whole bunch of plant material. And it's mainly because Triceratops had a family member a long, long time ago that had a beak. And it's something that carries on. So with beak dinosaurs like that, we see mainly that they're eating plants. Okay, so here, who here likes to eat their vegetables? <laughs> then you will love this dinosaur. All right, thank you so much. You know, I don't know about you guys, but I'm having such a great time in the paleontology hall here at the Museum of Natural Science. It's like our very own special behind the scenes tour here. Now, Lisa, where did you take us? I took you over to our fossilized triceratops skin. Triceratops, that was a bad word. I took you over to our fossilized triceratops skin. Kids, the reason why this is so amazing is because we do not get fossilized skin all the time. Skin is really squishy, right? And fossils are rocks, and are rocks hard or squishy? Hard. hard. They're really, really hard. So to find skin that turns into a rock is really rare. This is one of a kind fossil, and it actually came from Lane. That is so cool. What do you guys think? It rocks. I'm really excited about where we are now. Can you tell our viewers? Of course. Right now, we're in our human anthropology section, and this hall is amazing for the evolution of hunting. The guy we have right behind us now is actually trying to hunt the swilly mammoth, and he's holding a stick called an atlatl. It means spear throw, and he does have a spear in it. However, it's not the best in this close situation. He doesn't look like he's going to be very successful. <laughs> Not too much, but there's always hope in the hunt. But what happens to him is actually right on the other side of the woolly mammoth, and it's not the best of endings. Oh, well, let's go find out what happens. What's going on with this guy up here? What's happening with this guy up here is that he has really bad luck. He's actually the same guy on the other end who's hunting a little bit too close to his prey, and he got thrown up in the air. We call him Rodeo Man because his injuries are very similar to Rodeo Riders. Oh, my goodness. I hope he lands in a bush or a tree or something soft. <laughs> I really hope so. I'm not sure if he's that lucky, but there are other ways to hunt, though, like the guy right over there behind us. Ooh, let's go take a look. Okay, Lisa, so it looks like our former rodeo man learned from his mistakes. What do we have going on back behind us? The guy we have right behind us is standing on top of what is a cliff, and he has a torch in his hand. And like every kid should know is that they don't play with fire. And the woolly mammoth listened to his mother, and he's trying to get away from that human with the fire, but his only option is to run off that cliff, and that's not the safest place to be. So just that little torch with fire is enough to make a woolly mammoth run off a cliff and give Rodeo Man some dinner. I would really have to say so. And maybe he has some of his buddies right behind him who are really loud and scary. If somebody was trying to come out with me with a torch and they were a small little kid, I would run off a cliff maybe for safety. Oh, no. <laughs>
in our bark gallery, art gallery. We try to be clever that way. But right now what we're looking at is petrified wood. It used to be a real life tree, but now it's been turned into a fossil, which are just rocks. And it's really beautiful and amazing. This is the largest piece that we have in here, but every single one of these pieces of woods are individual. And we actually have the whole pieces that look just like normal logs of trees. And you really don't know what you're looking at until you cut into it. This is amazing. So can the kids touch these? Oh, yes. They can touch it. Wow, they're right so here. smooth too. Yeah. What you really, petrified wood is really amazing. And the reason why it's so smooth is because there's a giant diamond tip saw that comes down and cuts it. This is actually about the same hardness as a granite countertop. Wow, you're right. It does feel very hard. Mm -hmm. And I, this would make a really beautiful coffee table, I think. Oh my gosh, or a dining room table. Oh, oh gorgeous. <laughs> I'm so excited, Lisa, to be up here above the Paleontology Hall talking about some really fun dinosaur toys. These toys are really amazing. All of them came from our gift shop, and they're all so fun and educational. Now, let's start with this guy over here. This is really neat. Can you tell me about him? This one is a part of our Adopted Dinosaur series. When you adopt one of these dinosaurs, you can name them yourselves and put, you, put its name on the little card there, and all the proceeds go to the museum. You get to own a little piece of the museum and take it home with you. I love this. So they get a little adoption certificate. They get a cute little dinosaur. And over here, we've got these little little dinosaur glider so we've got two dinosaur gliders that come with it I love this I think it makes such a great present even a holiday present or a birthday present for a child oh present for anyone now over here we've got the dinosaurs okay you know I only know t-rex mm -hmm. so here's our t-rex who else do we have Right here we have our Triceratops again. This one right here is our Stegosaurus, and this is a very, very popular Brachiosaurus, a long-necked dinosaur. I love it. So all of these can be purchased in the museum gift shop as well. And I have to say, when I was in your gift shop the other day, this guy over here really caught my eye. He is a 4D Vision Tyrannosaurus Rex model. And what I loved about him is that you can actually see all of his organs, his body parts, take him apart, look inside, and put him back together. Mm -hmm. It's very important to remember that these fossils were actually once living animals. So having this reminds you, whoa, this was once a living animal because animals are still around today. And it's important to remember that they're always going to be around no matter how different they do look. Exactly. It's just such a neat toy. And behind us, we've just got to get a shot of what we have behind us. This is amazing. I don't know if you all can see it at home, but we are looking down on top of some of these dinosaurs. Absolutely amazing. Our Overlook is one of my favorite places to send people before they actually enter the hall to understand that we are shoving about 4.5 billion years of history in the size of a football field. It's amazing that we are able to put this much time and history in a single space. Now, I heard that this paleontology hall is the largest in the nation. Is that true? It is. It's the largest in our country and it's the second largest in the world. I do believe the first largest is in Europe. I'm not exactly sure. 
you know, everything's bigger in Texas, right? <laughs> Most certainly. We do try our best here. <laughs> now, how many dinosaurs do we have on display here at the museum? Oh gosh, how many do we have? Now, all of these creatures here aren't dinosaurs. The dinosaurs we do have are going to be the Allosaurus, Stegosaurus, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We have about twelve to thirteen dinosaurs, and a few of them are going to be the same species, but no one dinosaur is the same. This is amazing. Now, I read somewhere that your T-Rex, the way his hands are constructed and his feet are constructed, was some of the most intricate revitalization of a fossil. Can you tell me about that? Yes. Uh, now, when we're looking for bones, sometimes we're only hoping to find a few pieces. Sometimes only a few pieces of bone defines an entire species. Now, with our T-Rex, Y-Rex over there, he has some of the best hands and best feet that have ever been found. And with T-Rex fingers, normally they only have two fingers. What happens with him, he actually has a third digit that is still there. The best T-Rex hands that have ever been found. Ever been found globally. Well, some of the best that I have ever seen and uh, quite a few people would argue the same. That is amazing. Well, we are just so blessed and privileged to have such a wonderful museum, wonderful paleontology hall here at the Houston Museum of Natural Science. Moms, dads, I encourage you, come on out, bring your kids, and we will be giving away a special family four-pack of tickets so you can bring your kiddos out to the museum and experience it for yourself. Thanks so much for joining us, Lisa. Thank you so much. I had so much fun with you guys today. And thanks so much, kiddos. Bye. Now, Diego, what did you think about our special tour at the Houston Museum of Natural Science today? I think it was awesome. It was the best tour I've ever had. That's awesome. Now, is this your favorite dinosaur from the tour? Yeah. Now, do you remember what kind of dino this was? A triceratops. Way to go! Good job. Williams, so did you have fun on our tour today? Yes, ma'am. So what was your favorite part? Um, the, s the skin. When we got to touch the skin? That was so cool. Yes, it was. Awesome. Well, I'm so glad you were able to come out and hang out with us today at the museum. Good job. I am here with the beautiful Denise. Denise, did you have fun on our tour today? Yes. Now, what dinosaur do you have? T-Rex. T-Rex. Now, what noise does a T-Rex make? Roar! Roar! Way to go. Lisa, I had an absolute blast coming out here to the museum today. Thank you so much for showing us around. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for wanting to hang out with me. I love giving tours here at the museum and I invite every single family and every single person to come to the museum. And if you do want to hang out with a tour guide like me, they're called Discovery Guided Tours. They are public, $5 um, when you walk in, but you can always book a tour ahead of time and you can go to our website, hms.org, or just give us a call. Awesome. So you heard that. Go to the website, book a tour, and ask for Lisa. She's awesome. Bye. We had so much fun at the Houston Museum of Natural Science today. Let me hear you roar. Roar. roar!